hello there. This is LEGO Dynasty, and today I'm bringing you guys my review of the LEGO Star Wars Course Count Guard Gunship. It is set number 75354, comes with 1,083 pieces, and is rated ages 9 and up. Now this set retails in the United States for $139.99, and in Canada for $179.99. Now without further ado, let's kick off this review, starting with the box. And as you can see, box has the Coruscant Guard Gunship, of course, being displayed on the planet Coruscant. Makes a lot of sense for that. Uh, of course, you have the characters, as you can see, uh, sort of shown off on the box with Commander Fox and a Shock Trooper. Well, going down to the bottom, you have the other figures displayed there. It is, of course, denoted as a Clone Wars set, which, of course, makes sense, as this is from the Season 6 arc of the Clone Wars, which involved uh, Padme. Now, take a look at the back of the box. You can see some of the other play functionalities included in the set, which, unfortunately, in this set is quite lacking mostly due to the fact that they downgraded this set in terms of its size by so much that to me it significantly lacks a lot of play functionalities that other gunships manage to have. Now that's not to say it's all bad with this set but uh, we'll get into that. Now of course we'll take a quick look at the manual as you can see with the rendered image which uh, as I've said many times definitely not a personal fan of. It uh, doesn't take anything from the building experience, but I preferred the older style manuals as I feel they looked a lot better. Uh, flipping through, there is uh, some advertisement in the back for some other LEGO Star Wars sets that came out alongside of it. And again, uh, something that I always find funny just because they put these pages in other sets uh, generically, like they don't specialize it. So they advertise this same set in their own manuals and I just... Even when I was a kid, when they would do this, I always found that interesting. Like, it obviously, it costs a saving measure there, so they don't have to do different ones for different sets. But, yeah, something interesting. And before we get into the set and minifigures, I figured I would take a look at the extra pieces, as you can see. Left with quite a nice assortment of extra pieces. Of course, you're given some extra visors and antenna pieces that you could theoretically put on the shock troopers, though in canon, none of those figures were ever seen with them, leading uh, a lot of people to wonder why they didn't just use the older style helmet mold for the regular shock troopers and just use the new helmet mold for Commander Fox since only he needs the visor. And of course, Lego uh, decided not to go along that route. You also have some extra studs for the stud shooters and some nice technic parts, etc. Now take a look at our minifigures. We'll start off with the Shock Trooper here. As you can see, he looks pretty darn good, I have to say, overall. Though he does have one notable thing, and yes, I personally am not a big fan of the new helmet design. That is just my opinion. I don't think it is accurate or looks that great. Um, at the end of the day, they left that option for kids. Uh, and if they want to customize it, they are free to do so. Personally, I would like to see them use the older style helmet molds like they have currently in production with the 187th Clone Troopers. Uh, obviously, it would be printed with the uh, Shock Trooper helmet design, just like it was in 2014 when we last had these Phase 2 Shock Troopers. And then, obviously, you have the body and leg printing that is updated 2020 design, which I think looks very good with a lot nicer of a helmet. Uh, overall, uh, I still think these are pretty decent minifigures. Uh, we're apparently going to be getting more of these characters in an upcoming battle pack. So at the end of the day, uh, the fact that we only got two of them, I guess is okay. Uh, though I do think we should have gotten more of these guys, perhaps as many as three, or more preferably in my opinion, four. Now moving on to Commander Fox, and really there we got to talk about some of the elephants in the room. For So overall, I think Commander Fox is a cool character, and I'm glad he is in LEGO uh, in his Phase 2 armor, but this one is just... He's just not good. Like, take everything... Like, what I say about the helmets. Okay, he has a visor. Uh, that is fine. Like, whatever. Like, he, he has actually using the helmet molds uh, for the visor because they decide that's what they had to do. That's fine, but the printing on this character is just so subpar, unfortunately. Like, um, I understand they have trouble printing white onto red, they, but they, it's been almost over a decade now. Like, come on, they gotta figure something out. Like, because the fact that this is pink and, you know, it just, 
it, it seems like I'm complaining about little things, but it just, to me, it just looks awful. Uh, especially when you have them side by side because overall I think the torso and leg printing on these shock troopers is incredible I love it, but on commander Fox I think it's just bad and it's really unfortunate because when we found the rumors that he was going to be in the set I was so excited as I'm sure a lot of you guys were and unfortunately the execution on him Just to me is not to the standard we should expect we we shouldn't be thankful that just because they released Commander Fox in a set, like, and kiss Lego's feet or kiss Lego's ass, like some people like to do. And if you like this minifigure, that's fine. I personally really dislike it. Uh, and it's really, like, I, I planned to get a bunch of these sets, and um, quite honestly, I'm probably only going to get the one. Uh, now, next issue uh, is the lack of a waist cape. Uh, which they brought up uh, recently, their reasoning. I still completely disagree. Uh, as we saw with the 2012 waist capes, they can still sit figures down on studs with the waist cape. So that is not an issue at all. I think it just looks a lot worse. I think the playability at the end of the day, like, I don't think it goes up so much more by having it printed, especially when it's not 360 degree printed, which custom companies have been doing for literally again over a decade now like lego if you're going to print these waste tapes print the side printing you can do it it's not going to cost you any extra and really like uh, i feel like i've complained enough about this figure it's unfortunate uh because i was really excited but i just i think he's bad our next minifigure is chancellor palpatine in his senate wardrobe and I have to say, I really like this figure. Like, uh, switching gears, I think this is a great minifigure. I think he looks awesome with the dress piece printed uh, to represent. And it's double-sided printing as well, which I just think looks awesome. Uh, I think his face print is pretty darn good. He has a double-sided face. And overall, uh, I think he is a good character. Now, uh, uh, there has been discussions about whether he should have been included accuracy-wise to the Clone Wars episode. Uh, and I think there is some merits to that, but in the end of the day, they went with him, and I think he is a good minifigure uh, in this set. And lastly, we have Padme, but interestingly enough, she's in her Malevolence outfit uh, that we got way back when the Malevolence set came out, which I personally never got, uh, but kind of interesting, especially since she is supposed to be in more of her, like, uh, episode 3 wardrobe, uh, like that one outfit that we see her uh, when she goes to Mustafar, uh, that is the outfit she's wearing during this Clone Wars arc. And I think it would have made a lot more sense for them to print that. As I don't believe we have even drawn that outfit. So, very weird. It it does strike me as they just had this print available and decided just to do it rather than make a new one. Which just strikes me as laziness there. Uh, of course, a lot has been brought up about them reusing uh, the Jin Erso head for Padme. Which again is just... It's weird because, like I said, it feels like they're reusing this print, but then they just went ahead and reused a Jin Erso print rather than her own print that they likely would have had from 2013, uh, as I'm not sure if we've gotten any other sets of Padme since uh, the 2013 gunship. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, apologies, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if we have. And at the end of the day, uh, just another pretty inaccurate figure. Uh, and... Yeah, that, that's just what it comes down to. Now, going away from the minifigures, let's talk about the gunship itself. And I have to say, uh, when I first heard that they were doing a Corsair Guard gunship, I was actually kind of excited because uh, I thought, you know, new concept. Like, it, it, it's kind of cool to do something different. But then when I found out it was going to be downscaled, I got worried. And unfortunately, those worries turned out to be true because it is such a downscaled model that it frankly loses so much of the playable aspects that the other ones had that I think it's a big detriment to the set. So starting off, we'll start off with the good parts, I guess, uh, which is obviously you have these two uh, positions where you can fit your characters, your clone troopers. Obviously on the box they have Commander Fox and a shock trooper piloting the ship. So we will fit them in just to display what that looks like. Very easy to place them inside, um, just like that. And they look excellent there. Now, just like that. And you have your two 
pilots of the ship inside. Now, as we saw in the uh, Mandalorian uh, Season 3, it is somewhat accurate to have the shock troopers piloting, as that's what they showed in the show, rather than them giving specific pilots. Um, so, in that a aspect, I guess it's accurate. Of course, in the actual Season 6 arc of the Clone Wars, I'm pretty sure they had actual uh, pilots, but they probably just didn't want to make the other molds, uh, which... Again, you know, Star Wars, biggest theme of Lego, and they invest so much of these one-off molds to these other themes, and again, uh, cheap out on Star Wars. It's just very interesting how that happens so often with Star Wars. Um, of course, as you saw, it does have the very nice handle. That is uh, a bit small in my mind, but it works. Uh, as you can see, definitely is very stable there. I'm not worried about it falling or breaking at all. It's Technic parts, that is very well put but because of the size uh, downgrade compared to previous models uh, I just find as you can see like I'm touching both of these you know engine parts here and I feel like I'm gonna knock it off like these are pretty set in place but I'm still worried uh, especially over the years that these parts might get looser as I'm grabbing it um, so that's sort of a downgrade. Of course, I'm a little, I'm an adult. Obviously, if you are a child, you might not have that issue for a long time, but it's still a little bit notable in my opinion. Now, of course, it does have your typical bubble turrets, as you can see, and uh, compared to other models, it is well placed. It's not going to fall off like it used to with, I believe, the 2003 and 2008 models. It is very well uh, placed in that sense, so that's nice. There's, of course, also a little turret on the bottom here that is very small, but works, meant to be a turret, of course. One of the things that is missing is any sort of weaponry on the top here. They went with it completely closed off, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, but really they don't have the space because of how they downgraded the set in terms of its size. Now, the other main play functionality is these bubble turrets uh, being replaced with a, uh, these stud shooters which I guess enhances playability I still think they could have incorporated these elsewhere maybe even on the top here uh, or something to represent that and then still had the classic bubble turret design that I think just looks a lot better uh, but at the end of the day they went with that and it definitely has some playable functions that I'm sure kids will enjoy uh, obviously when it comes to shooting very easy you just push down and they shoot off and you probably lost your studs like i just did now getting into the nitty gritty of the set uh, opening up these sides you can of course open up this section here on both sides i should mention which i'll show off a bit better but uh, at the end of the day there's nothing like you you can fit in a character i guess uh you can stuff chancellor palpatine in there close to one side and he's not going to go anywhere, I guess. But uh, in previous models, there would have been, you know, like a little build stuffed in there. Like a command center you could pull out or a back to tank, uh, a weapon case, etc. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's just empty. And that's kind of disappointing that they didn't add anything extra there. But frankly, they didn't have the room because of how small the set is. Now, the other main functionality is the one opening door uh, on both sides i should say but it's it's supposed to be swinging in both directions instead it is a single design here as you can see and you're left with some space to place your minifigures uh overall though it's it's really not a lot of space i have to say and you have to be very particular with where you place your figures as uh they can't fit in every stud slot uh, which is a bit annoying in my mind uh, you can fit a decent number of figures, but definitely not as many as previous models. Again, going to the price, or price, the size of this model, as you can see here. So we have Chancellor, a Shock Trooper, and Padme there. And they fit in like so. Showing off what it looks like on the other side. Popping it open, just like that. And you see the three characters right there. And you have space on the other side for other figures. So it has some space, but definitely to me, it's kind of hard to get in there, to be honest with you, because it's only the one open door. Uh, like kids that are younger, you know, falling into the age demographic, 
might not have that same issue, but because this set will likely be picked up by others, uh, I think I should mention, like, uh, it is very tight to place your figures, especially deeper inside, like, I really don't think you can really fit much in there, uh, or even if you do, it'll be very hard to get out. Now, shutting the doors and flipping the side, the set to the back, uh, there is a open compartment, but again, nothing is there. Like, you could pretend clone troopers are running out of it, I guess, but there's no, like, speeder bike or uh, anything to come out of the back. It's just, it, it, it opens, which is nice, and then you can close it. Like, that's it. Now, when it comes to the LEGO Star Wars Porcelain Guard gunship, I think what could have been had they made the set quite as large or even like it didn't have to be as large like but they went so much smaller and to show off the size difference i'll show off the 2013 gunship next to it so here we have the of course course on guard gunship and then to the right is the uh, 2013 republic gunship and really like it is a massive size difference uh, of course, slightly different styles, uh, with this one having the Attack of the Clones bubble turrets on the end here that can pop out with the one door. But even in that sense, I still think it is quite uh, notable how much larger this uh, version of the gunship is. And personally, I think it's actually easier to hold. Like, the handle on the 2013 gunship is a lot easier to control especially compared to the other one. Like, don't get me wrong, like I think younger people probably are going to have no issue uh, with this handle. But for anyone older, like, or adults, you're definitely going to find, I feel that this set is just so much smaller than previous ones, and it's going to be a lot more difficult. And at the end of the day, I think that is notable because LEGO is starting to really embrace the adult demographic. And I know this set is age rated for uh, nine, and up which is completely fine but I think they have to find a nice balance uh, or a better balance than what they are currently doing because they seem to be stuck with adults or kids it's not merged together where they have sets that like are easier to build but still are nice for adults to display or control you know use place etc I, I just think you know they're they're really just, they, they've really lost the, you know, mid-tier uh, benefit. Uh, and what I mean by that is like teens to, you know, young adults. Like I know they listed as 18 plus, but a lot of their 18 plus sets to me kind of view as more, you know, 25 or 30 plus in the sense of, you know, the nostalgia they're trying to get, you know, who they're like really targeting. They're calling it 18 plus, but they're really targeting uh, more adults, you know, obviously pricing those sets at significant prices um, for adults that are more likely to have that money around. But yeah, like when I see this 2013 gunship, which I bought used, I personally never had this set when it first came out. I only got this set a couple of years ago and it's one of my favorite sets that I've gotten, uh, especially since I don't get many used sets. I think this is one of my only ones, but it's probably one of my favorite sets uh, that I own and had this set uh, the course on guard gunship been around the same size as the uh, 2013 gunship I think it would have been a lot better of a set and probably would have um, made my issues with the minifigures a lot less of an issue because I would have loved the model so much more my issue with the course on guard gunship is the minifigures and the model itself is just so subpar in my opinion like just to show you some of the other play functionalities uh, on this 2013 model, you have this little command center you can pull out. Uh, or, no, sorry, it was a missile bay uh, that was stuck in here, which is just fun. Uh, I did lose the part here, but it was flick fire missiles at the top uh, that you could basically refill. And then, of course, you had a nice speeder bike at the back there, as you can see, that would pop out at the back, uh, just like that. You can see it right there. So just a lot of other play functionality that is missing on the current gunship that I just think is very notable. I really have to say that I'm really upset that the Corsair Guard gunship was such a bust, in my opinion, of a set. 
uh, I really was hoping I would like it a lot more than I did. And unfortunately, like a lot of the others, it's just, to me, uh, not a great set. Now, having said that, I really hope LEGO continues to do variants of gunships. I don't think the fact that this set is a variant is an issue. I think the red coloring is awesome. I think it's unique, and I'd love to see them do, you know, a Munoz 10 gunship, a Wolfpack gunship, uh, and then, of course, another regular gunship, whether it is the 2002 version or the Revenge of the Sith version. Uh, either or, I think, would be awesome sets to see uh, in... Uh, as future LEGO Star Wars Clone Wars sets, but it's really probably going to come down to how well this set sells. So I would still pick this set up on a discount. I personally waited for double points on the set. Uh, if you guys want to pick it up from uh, on sale, I definitely recommend that. I wouldn't pick this set up at full price. If you're a Clone Wars fan, don't have issues with the helmet holes and are okay with how Commander Fox looks, the minifigures probably aren't an issue to you. And in that sense, you're not going to find as many problems with them like I and many others have, and that's completely fine. You're entitled to that. Uh, personally, uh, I think the gunship itself is a okay version, but just like I said, too downscaled, not enough play features, and just too small, like is all it comes down to, just too cramped of a set. With that being said, that's all my opinion. Let me know your thoughts on the LEGO Star Wars Corsair Guard gunship. Are you guys a fan of this model if you have picked it up or are you planning to? What are your guys' thoughts on the minifigures such as Commander Fox? Please let me know in the comments down below. Please leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed and have a great day everyone.